and the party continues. We are going to work on the second problem in these notes, and it says the rate of change of y is proportional to y. So that sentence gives it away. The word directly is missing, but it's the same idea and the same structure. So we will begin, let's use a purple pen. So the rate of change of y with respect to time, you keep reading, you'll realize that t pops in here, so we assume it's time. The rate of change of y is proportional to y. And I would love to go through this entire thing again, and all that, but you saw the whole process, so this all leads to y equals c e to the k t. And what we're gonna do is take the information they give us and, well, answer the question. So when t equals zero, y equals four, I'm just gonna stop right there. So t equals zero, y equals four. That's good to know. And I'm gonna take this equation and plug in zero, four, and just get somewhere with it. I haven't even finished reading the problem yet. Probably not the best solve problem solving idea, but we'll go for it. So four equals c e to the zero, okay, that looks like okay, it's not. I mean, I guess it's okay, but it's not okay is zero, okay, anyway. Um, so four equals C and then E to the zero is one. So, ah, C is four. So whenever they tell us in this circumstance, whenever they tell us with the structure that we know what the Y value is when T equals zero, then they're actually giving you C. So moving forward, we actually know a little bit more now. I don't know what these squiggly lines are for. They just keep my work from falling all over the place, I guess. So when T equals three, Y equals six. So T equals three. Y equals six, good to know. So we're gonna put a six here and then a four and then E to the three K. And we're gonna keep solving and we're gonna find out what K is. I will definitely need a calculator for this one. So we'll divide by four, that gives us six fourths, that's three halves, equals E to the three K. Oops, I put T, lo siento. Okay. And we're gonna take the log of both sides, so natural log of three halves equals three K. And then we'll divide by three. So one third natural log of three halves is equal to K. And that's fantastic. I have no idea what that is as a decimal, so this is where the calculator comes in handy. And we'll grab the calculator and let it be handy. So one third times the natural log of one and a half. And I got this. Now, for the rest of this problem, I'm gonna use that as K. So let's store it. I'm going to press the STO button. Press the STO. S-T-O. And alpha K is going to be K. So now my calculator thinks that this is K. And I will use that. Even though I've written it this way. And if you want to write the decimal, you can. If you want to be like, oh, K is equal to 0 0.135. That is fantastic. You can. But don't use this. Use all those decimals. And it's stored in your calculator for convenience. So what is the value of y? So I don't know why. Don't know why. <laughs> Neither did Nora Jones. When t equals four is the song reference. Okay, so t equals four. So I'm looking for y, and I do know c now. I'm basically going back to this formula time after time after time. That's what I did here. I knew what c was. I plugged in the, the t and the y, and you know, just keep plugging in what you know. So I do know c now. I do know K now, and even though I'd love to put that number, let's just put K, because the calculator knows what it is, and then times four, so four K. And at this point, we're just gonna plug that in the calculator and get an answer, and it is four E to the four K. There we go, we got 6.868. Fantastic, let's move on to the next one. The next one takes that same idea and just makes it a little more practical with a, well, practical application. The population of bacteria increases according to the law of exponential growth. Okay, not worded the exact same way as the last problem. This one says the rate of change of y is proportional to y. Notice the very first problem used both. So just be aware of that. If you, if you see the law of exponential growth, it means the rate of change of something is proportional to that thing, which really eventually leads to this. Maybe different variables, but it's that same idea. So let's see, population of bacteria increases according to the law of exponential growth. And we're dealing with bacteria, the population. I'm gonna use P for population. So instead of Y equals, I'm going to say DP DT equals KP. And you can go through the whole process. You get the same thing. So population is equal to CE to the KT. Good to know. If you don't write the first step, it's fine. It takes you straight to the second step. Well, not straight to the second step, but we're not gonna go through all that every time. 
If there were 200 bacteria at the end of the third hour of an experiment and 300 at the end of the fifth hour, how many bacteria were in the original population? So let's be really careful about what they're asking. How many bacteria were there in the original population? Here's what they're asking. When T equaled zero, what was the population? And I'm gonna go ahead and just be real honest with you, you're actually finding C, which makes sense because if I plugged a C, I'm sorry, a zero right here, P would equal C. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the population, which is really just the C value at zero. There's the question. Let's use some information they gave me to get that. So uh, the population was 200 when the time was three, and conveniently we have just lovely numbers that are divisible by 100. The population was 300 when the time was five, and we'll keep going from there. So 200 equals C E to the three K. And then you're thinking, oh, what am I gonna do? How do I solve? You have two variables. So you can't do anything, right? Like you can solve for C if you want, you can solve for K if you want, but what are you gonna do with it? I don't know, let's just skip it. So same idea, 300 equals C E to the five K. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know. I have no idea, I need something. So here's what you really have. You have a nonlinear system of equations. We have a C and a K that are lurking and we don't know where they are and what they are. And so the best way to find them is to solve a system of equations. I have a recommendation. Let's divide by E to the three K and it'll give us C over here. And let's divide by E to the five K and it'll give us C over here. And if C equals this and C equals this, they must equal each other. So we'll set these equal to each other and solve. So 200 over E to the 3K equals 300 over E to the 5K. And we'll cross multiply. All right. We're gonna keep solving for K. Now, eventually we're gonna to need to know what C is. That's technically what they're asking here. We'll cross that bridge in a minute. We can't really get there without knowing what K is unless we do some unnecessarily difficult math. So let's get K by itself. I think we can divide by E to the 3K. That's gonna wipe those out. We'll divide by E to the 3K here. Let's do two steps at once. If I'm gonna move my Ks to this side, let's move the numbers to the other. So let's divide by 200 as well. And we'll divide by 200. And so those, oh, I'll switch colors just for fun. Those two cancel, those two cancel, they divide out. And so I'm left with e to the, wait a minute now, e to the 5k over e to the 3k. Subtract your exponents, that's 2k. And then 300 divided by 200 is one and a half. Natural log of one and a half is 2k, so k is half of the natural log of one and a half. Okay, now we know what K is. I don't know the decimal, but we'll be all right. I don't know the decimal, but by plugging things in here, I would say, well, I don't know the population. I don't know C, but E is to the zero K. Hmm, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Let's keep moving. I'm actually taking you down a little rabbit trail right here. You're gonna see where this is going in a second. This is gonna be stored as K. There we go, we know what K is now. So even if I typed all that in, zero times, well, K, that is the exact same thing I just wrote. This would go away anyway, and I'm just saying that P equals C. Well, I've already told you that. So I, I still haven't really gotten anywhere with this. What am I gonna do? Well, I know I'm looking for C. I definitely know I'm looking for C now because the P that I'm looking for is C. So what I could do is just take this K and plug it into either one of them. So let's do it. Let's use that one. Numbers are slightly smaller, not that it matters, but C equals 200 over E to the 3K. And I got 108.8. Eight, six, six. Okay, so here's the deal. In this problem, I should have told you where to round. I should have said round to the nearest bacteria because it's bacteria. But the standard practice in this class 
is to round to three decimal places. So in the convention of the habit, let's use three decimal places, but for practicality, bacteria, yeah, it'd be 109. So that's what you'd have.